what's going on everybody welcome back to my youtube channel let's solve this math question that says find the value of x for which 9 to the x minus 6 to the x is equal to 4 to the x well our first step will be for us to divide through by 4 to the x so the first term is 9 to the x i'm going to be dividing it by 4 to the x minus the second term 6 to the x i'm dividing by 4 to the x remember we are dividing each of the terms by 4 to the x divided by 4 to the x very good very good now notice that 4 to the x divided by 4 to the x gives 1 so that we have 9 to the x divided by 4 to the x minus 6 to the x divided by 4 to the x to be equal to 1 very good now our next step will be for us to apply the law of indices which says when i have for example a over b and this is carrying a power of m b is also carrying a power of m this is equal to a over b all raised to the common power m so we're going to be applying this to what we have here and here so this becomes 9 over 4 all raised to the common power x minus this becomes 6 over 4 all raised to the common power x equal to 1 very good now we all know that 9 is a perfect squared which means it can be written as 3 squared all over 4 is also a perfect squared which means it can be written as 2 squared and all this is raised to the x minus now let's break this down 2 can go so 6 divided by 2 is 3 and 4 divided by 2 is 2 so here we have 3 over 2 all raised to the x and this is equal to 1 very good very good so now let's apply the indices law of common powers here so this can be written as 3 over 2 all raised to the common power 2 and remember we have another power of x so all raised to the x minus this is 3 over 2 all raised to the x equal to 1 very good now our next step will be for us to apply the law of indices which says that when i have a to the m all raised to the n this is same as a to the n all raised to the m so the position of m and n doesn't matter so we're going to be applying this to what we have here because we want this to resemble here so this becomes 3 over 2 all raised to the x and all this will be raised to the 2 very good minus this will be 3 over 2 all raised to the x equal to 1 very good so now we have 3 over 2 all raised to the x here the same thing here so we can introduce substitution so we can therefore say that let's 3 over 2 all raised to the x which is a common term that we have there be equal to y that means wherever i see this kind of a term i'm going to be putting y there so that means this becomes y squared so y squared minus y 
So minus y equal to 1. Equal to 1. Very good. So we have a quadratic equation. Now our next step will be for us to move 1 to the left hand side. And we do that by subtracting 1 from both sides. Now subtracting 1 from both sides. This becomes y squared minus y and then minus 1 to be equal to, on the right hand side, 1 minus 1 is 0. Very good. Now we have a quadratic equation that we cannot factorize. So because of that, we're going to be using the general formula to solve this, which is a quadratic formula. And since we're looking for y, then the general formula will be y equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. But what is our a, what is our b, and what is our c? Our a is a coefficient of y squared, which is 1. Our b is a coefficient of y, which is negative 1. There's an invisible 1 here. And our c is the constant term negative 1. Very good. So now let's substitute. So we have y to be equal to negative b. So negative b. b is negative 1 plus or minus the square root of b squared. That's negative 1 squared minus 4 times a times c. So 4 times a, a is 1 times c, c is negative 1. All of our, the denominator, 2 times a, that's 2 times 1. Very good, very good. And now simplifying, we have y to be equal to negative times negative makes positive so i have positive one here plus or minus the square root of negative one squared is one minus four times one times minus one gives plus four very good all over two times one is two so simplifying further, we're going to have y to be 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 4 is 5 all over 2. So we have two values of y here. The first value is 1, go with the positive, plus the square root of 5 over 2, and then the other value of y is 1, this time go with the negative, minus the square root of 5, all over 2. Very good. Very good. So now let's recall our substitution. So recall that from our substitution, we said let 3 over 2 all raised to the x be equal to y. So we're going to be substituting each values of y here. So let's start with the first one by saying when y is equal to 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. Now this will be 3 over 2 all raised to the x will be equal to the value of y 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. Now there is something you need to notice that the left hand side will produce a positive value because it is positive and the right hand side is also positive. So this is possible. So our next step will be for us to also try for the other values of y. So we say when y is equal to 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2. 
and let's substitute that here so this is 3 over 2 all raised to the x equal to y which is 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2. Now notice something here the left hand side is positive but the right hand side is negative. This is positive but this is negative. So this is never possible and can never be possible. So we're going to be rejecting this and our focus will be just on this. So now let's solve this to get the value of x. So on solving, we're solving from this first case. We're going to take the log of both sides. So take the log of both sides. Please, we are abandoning this. We're no longer using this. We're only using this. So take the log of both sides. We have the log of 3 over 2 all raised to the x to be equal to the log of the right hand side, which is 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. Very good. Now, our next step will be for us to apply the law of log redeem, which is the power law, which says when I have the log of a to the p, this is same as p log a. That means this expression can be written as x log 3 over 2. Very good. And this is equal to the right hand side is log 1 plus the square root of 5 all over 2. Very good. Very good. Now, since we're looking for the value of x, we're going to be dividing both sides by log 3 over 2. So, dividing both sides by log 3 over 2, divide the right the same log 3 over 2. Notice the log 3 over 2 cancels out so that we have x to be equal to the right hand side is log 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 all over the log of 3 over 2. Very good. Very good. Now, our next step will be for us to apply the law of logarithm, which says when I have the log of a over b, this is same as log a minus log b. So we're going to be applying this law or property of logarithm to the numerator and to the denominator. So this becomes x equal to the numerator log 1 plus the square root of 5 minus log 2 all over. Now the denominator will be log 3 minus log 2. Very good. Very good. So this becomes x equal to the log of 1 plus the square root of 5 gives 0 0.510 minus the log of 2 gives 0 0.301 all over the denominator log 3 gives 0 0.477 minus log 2 is 0 0.301 one very good so now simplifying further we have x to be 0 0.510 minus 0 0.301 is going to be 0 0.209 divided by 0 0.477 minus 0 0.301 will be 0 0.176 and now dividing the actual value of x will be 0 0.209 divided by 0 0.176 will be 1.1875. And there you have it. Well, feel free to share your ideas in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, 
and have learned something from this video go ahead and give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos and like i always say until next time take care